wait, it, it wasn't ready. Just sent. We missed the first note. Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. I've been jumping into some more rabbit holes as of late, and I'd like to share some stories of some more famous or infamous players of World of Warcraft. Double Agent is a Pandaren Shaman who did something very unique. He attained the maximum level, 110, without ever Wait. picking a faction or leaving the starting area for his race. Pandaren have a different yeah, introduction for World true. of Warcraft. Okay. You don't pick a faction upon creating a character. Instead, you first make a neutral, factionless character. And you pick your faction after a short series of quests. Normally, oh. this process is done at around level 10 or so, but Double Agent found out that it was possible that you never needed to pick a faction, or even leave the starting area. He discovered that you could level to the max solely by gathering took. herbs and ore. I think the process is incredibly player. slow and tedious, but every expansion, he makes it a point to reach the new max level by gathering copper and peace bloom, and at the same time remaining neutral. Blizzard saw fit to reference him by putting an NPC named the Venerable Shaman in the Monk Order Hall, who patrols the area occasionally to mine some copper veins. The fuck, dude? Next on our list, we have oh, Ian Bates, also affectionately known as the Redshirt Guy. In BlizzCon 2010, he brought up some lore issues regarding the Wildhammer clan. This was during the Cataclysm beta, and one of the Wildhammers, Falstead, was replaced by Kurdran as a representative of the Council of the Three Hammers. Even though Varian Rin decided that Falstead was to be the representative. The game designer, no Chris Metzen, incorrectly stated that Falstead was dead, to which the redshirt guy corrected him. No? No, he survived, and in fact, <coughs> he it was the leader of Airy Peak in Vanilla WoW at, through Wrath of the Lich King. Right. Of course. Right. Of course. Yeah, Alex, what's up with that? <laughs> wow. Thanks. Thanks for pointing that out. We're going to get that fixed. Thank you. <laughs> and in response, it, ha, Blizzard ha, corrected their mistake a, ha, ha. and replaced Kurdran with Falstead. And as a nod to one fan's diligence, alongside Falstead is another NPC the wearing Wild a red Hammer tabard named checker. the Wild Hammer Fact Checker. And funny enough, if you take him out as a horde, he does indeed have a chance to drop a red shirt. Wait, really? Today, Ian is now a writer for the what Blizzard the fan site, Blizzplanet. That's crazy, I had no idea. Is that actually true? Yeah, that's true. Oh, this is a video! Oh boy. I love this one. This is my favorite. This is such an inspiration to me. Ever since God. the introduction of personal loot, ninja looting in World of Warcraft for the most part has been a thing of the past. Yeah, it But sucks. back during the early days, Every other day you would read stories of guilds having their loot stolen by what were called ninja looters. Quite possibly the most infamous incident was when the guild Nevermind killed Gar in the Molten Core. Yep. The guild was celebrating a successful kill and were talking amongst themselves trying to figure out who gets what. Yeah, I want that ring. I do. Alright. Who else is- who else wants Look how many it? years ago that was, man. Frass. At the time, the way most guilds handled loot was through the Dragon Killing Point system, or Dragon DKP for points. short. Incorrect Raiders would video. accumulate these points through raiding and doing guild activities, and they yep. would then spend these points on items that dropped. Nevermind seemed to forgo the system, instead opting for the free-for-all looting option and then rolling against each other for the boss's loot. While this is much simpler than the DKP system, it of course leaves the guild open to thievery of any items that drop. Like, I, I really don't understand that. It's the uh, dumbest Todd, thing. What are you what doing? The fuck? This is what they get. Oh my god. What the fuck? They deserve oh this. <gasps> I'm going to kill myself right now. See ya. They were left oh, in shock at this dude. turn of events. I mean, who could possibly imagine that out of 40 random strangers on the internet, that someone might be untrustworthy? Wow. I for one am astonished. Like I said, this happened all the time, but this particular incident was one of the most infamous, even spawning a parody video. That. that was a good video. That was so long ago, too. Oh!
This is from in the game, War. there exists a selection of items reserved for Game Masters, or GMs. They're primarily used for testing purposes, and have these rather overpowered properties tied to them. Yeah, One of these I items bet. was a shirt called Martin Fury, which upon but use, killed all enemies within a 30 yard radius. I guess not. Here's a story of somehow, some way, this item fell into the hands of not a GM, but rather a normal, everyday player. Leroy Speltz was a player in the guild The Marvel Family on the US server Vecna Lash. Like many others at the time, someone had hacked their way into his account and he had all of his items sold and characters deleted. Nope. As standard procedure, he paged a GM to have his account restored so he could get back to playing the game. His request was granted, but in the process the of restoring his account, so stupid, the GM dude. had mistakenly sent him Martin Fury along with the rest of his items. Imagine out of Not all being the soulbound, Leroy sent, sent this one. item over to his guild member, Karate Chop, and he did possibly the dumbest thing you could do. He used it. When yeah. Raid Night rolled around, they went on a Northrend world tour. Going through the entirety of the Old War Raid, the Obsidian Sanctum, <laughs> and the Eye of Eternity, they one-shotted oh all of the bosses dude. there and made it rain. Karate Chop was quite liberal there with his is, use dude. of the GM item, and the guild there claimed several world firsts in the span of an hour. Obviously, people figured out that something fishy was going on. God, the Marvel family wasn't she a was hardcore so progression funny. guild, and to see them rolling through everything was suspicious to say the least. Well, yeah, word got out about Martin Fury, and Blizzard, probably in a moment of panic, decided to give a 24-hour ban to not only those involved in the raid, but everyone online in the guild during that time. Wait, Imagine what? the surprise for the level 5s Even in the Elwyn Forest the just doing some questing wow. and logging in the next day well, to find em, out dude. that they were banned. I guess Hogger was in a bad mood that day. The way Blizzard handled it was lambasted and it was basically a giant yep. catastrophe. But after the dust had settled, Karate Chop himself received a permanent ban and the properties of GM items were changed so nothing like that could ever happen again. Was it really that big of a deal? I think that kind of stuff is funny. It'd be interesting if, like, there were more GM fuck-ups all the time. Just to, let me pause this real quick. Is my audio actually bad, or are you guys just um, saying... That? Your mic has been low for a long time. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, what do I do? Uh, uh I turn, I turn, uh, uh... Why don't you look at the mixer and turn it up, uh, dumbass? Uh, how about, how about now? Is this better now? Uh, looks, I, I think I turned it up a little bit, right? Is this good? Okay, it's better. Alright, yo, my bad. Alright, we should be good now. In the early days of World of Warcraft, everyone hated rogues. I should know, I was a rogue they in vanilla. They still do. They had a very high damage output, and combining that with stealth made them forces to be reckoned with in PvP. This was when PvP was in its infancy, and there were a lot of balance issues. Those bars, man? There were no diminishing returns, crowd control such as sheep could last yep. for a straight minute, and with the rogue having stuns, the disorients, and more, it was commonplace to lose control of your character for 30 seconds or even minutes at a time, while you were stuck in a seemingly infinite lock of stuns, disorients, and silences. This was the spotlight in the World of Roguecraft series of videos made by the player Mute. These were a series of this videos really showing right just here. how strong rogues were, giving the following no, two not. conditions. What do you mean? A, you were no, good, yeah, it is. and B, you had your cooldowns. You get killed, given these you don't two even things, have to do anything. What would you say if I said that you could beat anyone in the game? What would you say if I said you could do it naked with just a level 1 white dagger? Well, these videos showed just that. What a great a game. A naked rogue taking out not only just random I never players, watched that. but rank 14 grand marshals, including Matey, who was a pretty popular Wait, PvP you never warrior watched at the time. Warcraft? Although, there's some uh, controversy no, about did. that, if it was actually him, or if he sold his account, or whatever. Regardless, the video showed just how good rogues oh could God, be, given their right circumstances. Okay, they caused quite minute. the controversy at the time. People were outraged at how much control rogues had in PvP. Rogues responded, saying that they're too cooldown dependent, and so on. Yeah, it was an interesting time in the game where, if you were good enough, and with the combination of engineer gadgets, you would be able to pull off some amazing things. Nowadays, everyone has a CC breaker, everyone has a sprint, crowd control, everyone True. has a tool for everything Everybody for the everything. sake of balance. Maybe it's healthier for the game overall, no. but over time, interesting PvP videos like this have vanished. The World of Roguecraft videos, however, are still just as legendary as they've ever been, and I suggest watching them if you want to see an interesting part of the game's history in the realm of PvP. Was it really that broken? I guess so. 
I don't, I don't understand how like whenever you hit someone with a with a um, you hit them with a hamstring. You figure they're not going to be able to move. How does the hamstring last like two to three seconds? But whenever I get hit with a hamstring, it lasts. Like, Yo, two to true. Three minutes. I don't understand. True. Like, I don't even understand what it is that true. I'm fighting. What is, you can is consider this, this one a bonus intermission since I'm not really Yo, sure if this, this is guy. widely known, but this is well, Tommy people, and he's having him. trouble with hamstring. I can charge him, and as I am charging, I am slamming on my button that yep. only hits hamstring, and I'll miss. As in, not like it swings and misses, I won't get a hamstring off. If my only intent on attacking him is to get a hamstring, how the fuck can I miss it? Yeah, they it's... just got the flag right underneath of us, and this guy is running three times faster than I am. How the fuck? You see, back in the day, there was something called this charge guy. dodging. It's... The warrior's charge ability wasn't jump. the most reliable, and, you jump, and if see? you had good timing, if you jumped as they were charging you, oh, you would be out God. of range before they could actually reach and attack you. What a terrible game. This was a PvP tactic used by higher level players like that, to kite uh, warriors uh, more I easily. Bet you did. Tommy wasn't a fan of this technique, and he wasn't afraid to let his voice be heard. I don't understand and they fix why it is that I get my ass for him. stopped by these fucking coneheads. His woes continued, and his indignation steadily rose. He refers to his <laughs> opponents as coneheads, in reference to the look of the Alliance's PvP gear at the time. As his hamstrings failed, so uh, too did his patience. I'm gonna run I up. just missed again! What the fuck? <laughs> his rage bar was full, both in-game and out-of-game, and the oh, only thing this. that got hamstrung that day was his pride. Is this who I think it is? No, this isn't the Bohemian Rhapsody. This is Kunyan. Kunyan was considered the best warrior tank in the entire game during yep. the vanilla and burning crusade days. Yep. He was a Swedish player and initially the leader of the hardcore raiding guild, Nihilum. This was one of the there best, if not the best, raiding guilds of vanilla and the Burning Crusade yep. expansion, claiming dozens and dozens of world firsts throughout well, their time raiding. Thing that Later say. on, they would merge with another stupid. hardcore guild, Curse, to form the super guild, Insidia, which right. would continue to get world firsts throughout the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. Some of his other accomplishments would be obtaining the Scarab Lord title from the old AQ-40 event, along with the legendary god, mount. Man. He wasn't really known for a single event like most others on this list, rather just a really good, hardcore player who led an equally amazing raiding guild. Yep. Something that really put him and his guild into the spotlight, however, was a Serenite bomb glitch with the Lich King. Insidio was the first guild to kill the final boss of the Ice Crown Citadel, the Lich King, on 25-man difficulty. But, to everyone's shock, shortly after, the entirety of the team received a 72-hour ban for exploiting. That's right. There apparently was a bug where That's a right. consumable engineering item, a Serenite bomb, would respawn platforms falling around the room. The ban itself Welcome, was dude. controversial because these bombs were a part of everyone's DPS rotation, so Insidia didn't really know what they were doing or why it was happening. They knew. Blizzard observes every world first kill in they small knew. groups, and Kungin later alluded that one of the people in those groups knew him from his time playing another MMO, EverQuest, and that this person was biased against him and was looking for an excuse to drop the ban hammer. But whether you know mm -hmm. Kungin from this controversy That's or so just from dumb. being a very skilled no, player, that, you can't argue that. I don't because I knew a person that was able to evaluate this and they saw this happen and he said they were intentionally doing it and I believe him. 100%. Nah. He said they were running out to the edge and doing the bombs. It's long enough now to where I can say that. He's indeed one of the most famous players of World of Warcraft. From now on, nobody goes AFK, nobody falls the fuck asleep, there and everybody is, plays fucking good! Or you ain't getting shit! Wait a minute, didn't I just talk about this guy we in did. the last video? Yeah, Yeah, but insane. hey, come on, he's too good. This guy's the best. He's like a drill instructor for World of Warcraft rating. That's Why right. Why the fuck do I see people where they're not supposed to fucking be? Why do I see people anywhere This here? fits? Oh, well, this actually really fits well. No. What the fuck? Again, this is Dives, the legendary raid leader of the Guild White Wow. Club. That particular clip was after a failed Ragnaros attempt in the Molten Core. Dives, for those who don't know, is probably the most angry raid leader to have ever played the game. That's not and true. And when people screw up, he's not afraid to let them know. 
I don't know if he still plays, but if he does and you join his guild, just remember. Hit it very hard. I really wish- I hope he still does play. Speaking Ooh. of drill instructors, next up we have Shih Tzu of the guild Six Feet Deep on Dragon Ma. Nearing the release of the Burning Crusade expansion, guilds were ready to take their adventures into the Outland. How would you level? Questing, maybe some instances here and there, or just straight grinding? Well, if you were in the Six Feet Deep guild, you had less say in it than you thought. In fact, you had no say in it. A 2007 post by Shih Tzu laid down the rules. All members of the guild are expected to level to 70 as fast as humanly possible. If you want to quote experience the content, please do so after you have reached 70 or on another character. Yeah, dude. Here is how we will be leveling. You will yeah. log into the game and look for an officer. One of the officers will assign you to a five-man group. The five-man group will run the appropriate instance level over and over again until someone has to leave, at which point an officer will assign a replacement. No questing, no BGs, no grinding solo, no trade skills, no farming, I love this guy. and no checking out new races. This is great! If you're online, you will be expected to participate in one of the groups running five-man instances. The only exceptions to this will be if there are not enough people for you to group with and etc. There will be plenty of off hours of downtime oh to goof off if you dude. wish, but during game time, I swear to throw I will time. deep kick your ass if you're screwing around with stupid shit instead of participating in the leveling grind. Dang, he name dropped Thrall, that's serious business. That's real shit, dude. This was posted to the forums where Jesus he was widely Christ. mocked, and in response, he said that six I wish I could join members a guild are treated like this, more man. like really? prized athletes than kids. Yes, this is what it's I my want. job to provide clear instruction and focus so that our team is all on the same page, working towards the same goal. It's called leadership. Leadership. That's what matters. They hated him because he was... He was doing what he needed. Oh wait, what's this one? For this next one, I want you to think of anything you can do in the game. What is the most evil or offensive thing you could possibly do? Ninja looting, going dives mode, pretending to be a woman and flirting with dudes through a female avatar. Well, how about crashing a funeral? This next one isn't about a person, but rather a guild, Serenity Now, otherwise known as the Westboro Baptist Church who on one fateful night became the most hated guild on their <laughs> they renamed server, that? Yes. Someone in a horde guild sadly had I passed to join away, this guild. and her guild thought it would be appropriate to hold an in-game memorial for this. her. They posted on the forums, picked a location, and gave a time when the memorial would be oh held. My God. This was all well and good, but there were two problems. This it was, was on amazing. a PvP server, and it was the internet. There we go, dude. An Alliance Guild, Serenity Now, saw the day. post and decided that they would show up, Jeez. but it wasn't in a show of support. No. The turnout was very big, and people lined up in front of a pond to pay their respects to their fallen guildmate. That was a big turnout While back doing then. so, however, the most of were them were also small. dressed up in RP clothes, and they didn't have any weapons or armor Fucking equipped. Fucking nerds. Hey now, that would be inappropriate. Yeah. While all of this was going down, Serenity Now were storming through Fellwood up to Winterspring, and when they reached the memorial site, the most controversial, large-scale PvP battle in online gaming history all. took place. It was fucking hilarious. Arrows went flying, blood was spilled, and jaws were dropped. The techno scat man? Oh my I god. I like it! I do too, it sounds good. Frame rate, by the way. Oh my People god. People were outraged, others thought it was funny, and some quit playing the game entirely out of disgust. Wait, really? I want to remain That's the great. neutral mediator here, so I won't give my take. All I know is that this was quite possibly the most controversial thing to ever have happened in not neutral just World of mediator? Warcraft, but gaming, period. Give me a fucking break. Jesus Christ, dude. That oh, shit is actually funny. 